If you are waking up thinking that it's got to be more to your life than it is, man, believe that it is. Believe in your heart of hearts that it is. But to get to that life, you're going to have to jump. I'll tell you why I call it jumping. See, God, when he created all of us, he gave every last one of us a gift at birth. He never created a soul without endowing them with a gift. You just got to quit looking at gifts as running, jumping, sing, and dance. It's more than that. It's if you know how to network, if you can connect dots, if you draw, if you teach. Some of y'all fry chicken better than anybody else. Bake pie. Some of you cut hair, color hair. Some people do grass. I got a partner, man. We never wanted to go out with us because we stayed out too late. Come on, man, go out with now. Nah, I got to get up early, mom. Cutting Miss Johnson grass. We kept laughing at this dude. Cutting grass. How much they pay you? He got a landscaping company in Cleveland worth $4 million. Because all he do is cut grass. But he was gifted at it. I got a partner on a detail shop, make $800,000 a year detailing cars. He got six mobile trucks running around. $800,000 a year. All he do is detail cars. That's his gift. That's what he loved to do. You've got to identify that gift. Now listen to me. When you see people in life, when you're standing on the cliff of life, and you see people soaring by, when you see people soaring, going to exotic places, you hear about them doing wonderful things, maybe you look up the street and your neighbor just gets a car every year and every two years, you know, how is he doing that? Have you ever thought, maybe this person right here has identified their gift and is living in their gift? Because your Bible says, this your Bible, says your gift will make room for you. Your gift, not your education. You go get an education, that's nice. But if you don't use your gift, that education only gonna take you so far. I know a lot of people got degrees, man. They ain't even using it. It's your gift. But the only way for you to soar is you got to jump. You got to take that gift that's packed away on your back you got to jump off that cliff and pull that cord. That gift opens up and provides the soil. If you don't ever use it, you're going to just go to work. And if you're getting up going to work on a job every day that you hate going to, that ain't living, man. You just existed. At one point in time, you ought to see what living's like. But the only way to see what living's like, you got to jump. And here's the problem. Let me just be real with you. When you first jump, let me tell you something, your parachute will not open right away. I, I'm sorry. I, I wish I could tell you it did, but it don't. When you jump, it's not going to open right away. You're going to hit them rocks. You're going to get some skin tore off on them cliffs. You're going to get all your clothes tore off. You're going to get some cuts on you. You're going to be bleeding pretty bad. But eventually, eventually, the parachute has to open. That is a promise of God. That ain't a theory. That's a promise. His promises is true. Because listen to me. You cannot name one single thing God has not gotten you through. Name it. And if he ain't got you through it, he currently pulling you through it right now. And the living proof of it is you sitting in here. If he hadn't got you through it, you wouldn't even be here. So if he ain't never not got you through it, why would he not let your parachute open? He, it has to open, man. But it, it, you got to jump, though. Now, here's another thing. You can play it safe and deal without the cuts and the tags. And you can stand on that cliff of life forever safe. But if you don't jump, I got another promise I can make you. Your parachute will never open. You'll never know. You'll never know what God really has for you. See, your God has a wonderful life for you. Once again, I'm going to refer to your Bible. Now, you go down there, you memorize these scriptures, you don't apply them to yourself. Your Bible says that he comes to give you life and give you life more abundantly. If I were you, I would jump. Because that's the only way to get to that abundant life. You got to jump, man. You got to take a chance. Now, when I get through talking, there are those of you who have discussed this in the car. 
Well, I got bills, and I got I got bills. I, whether you stay on the cliff or you jump, you're going to have bills. Well, if I quit my job, I'm going to ruin my credit. If you got a job, you live in check to check. Even if you got A1 credit, you can't buy nothing else no damn way. At one point in time, man, do yourself a favor. Go, go see what God really do. God hold you up, man. He ain't going to let you fall. He ain't bring you this far and let you fall. Do yourself a favor, man. Before you leave this world, before you die, jump. Just jump one time. I want you to think about your goals and dreams. Think about the things that you've said that you want to do with your life. And this conversation that I'm going to have with you now will help you to begin to move with a sense of urgency because of the fact that time is the lifeblood of life. And what you do with the time that you have left on the planet. I was in a conversation with one of my business partners and he said the journey that I have traveled up to this point is longer than the journey that I have left. I don't know whether or not that hits you like it hit me. How much time do you have left? And the reason I'm sharing this with you, I want to talk to people who are hungry to make an impact with their lives, who are hungry to make this year the best you've ever had. Because a lot of people don't know we're going to leave here. It's a part of the process. And one of the seasons of life is you go through some stuff that you reach points in your life that you have some major breakthroughs. When I'm looking at my life as how I approach my life, how I use my time, who I spend time with, because my goal is, is to finish strong. I don't wanna just casually get to the end of life and oh well, that, that was a nice ride. No. My goal is to finish strong. Here's what I know about this thing called life. It is so unpredictable. And so the question becomes, what are you going to do now? I want you to write this down, please. Write this down. Live with a sense of urgency. Live with a sense of urgency. People that are living with a sense of urgency, they spend their time doing things that's them. This, what I'm doing now, this is me. It's, it's not work because I was doing that which I came here to do. You came here to do something and I'm encouraging you. Don't rule it out. Say, well, I, I don't know if you can do it. Well, so I has not seen. There's some things that you can do that, that you've never seen before. I has not seen. Ear has not heard. Knows in the heart of mankind what God has in store for you. That's why they have a term called breakthrough. That your life is a breakthrough moment. And I think we should have those in various areas of our lives. That we, we must live with a sense of urgency. And two, and that's making every moment count. And have breakthrough thinking. Look at ways in which in various areas of your life that you have breakthroughs, that you take your performance to the next level. When I was a kid, that the high jump in the Olympics was six feet. And a guy named John Thomas, who was a high jumper and had the record. And then, but he, he developed a strategy.
people were just drum, jumping forward to jump over. He was able to raise his body high enough in the air and he would go over the pole head first. Same event, but different strategy. He was able to maximize his impact. He was able to jump seven feet. Here's what I mean. That there's some things that you are doing and that you perhaps have not succeeded using the approach that you now have. A lot of people, when they fail over and over again, using the approach that they now are using, they stop. Change your approach, but don't change your decision. Because you've failed at it thus far does not mean that it can't be done by you. It's just that the approach that you're using now does not work. Many people using the same method, the same relationships, the same information, and they stop saying it can't be done. The belief was for centuries, man couldn't fly. You will never fly. You're not a bird. Get used to it. That was the belief. But the Wright brothers who they had breakthrough thinking and they changed the approach on what it would take to transport our bodies in the air. You came here to do something. Some people know right away of what that is. And there are some, because they have not been exposed or seen something, they have not seen anybody doing it yet. So they don't even try. And I saw Mr. Leroy Washington, who said to me, go in front of the room and work this problem out for me. Oh, sir, I can't do that. Why not? I'm not one of your students. Look at me. Go and do what I'm asking you to do anyhow. I can't, sir. And then the other students started laughing and saying, he's DT. He asked, what's DT? He's the dumb twin. And I said, I am, sir. He looked at me. He said, don't you ever say that again. Someone's opinion of you does not have to become your reality. No one rises to low expectation. And when you have low expectation for people, you treat them in a certain way. How you look at them, how you talk to them, and the time, the energy, and the effort that you put in with them. So he took this person that you see now, that was labeled educable, mentally retarded, and a different approach that allowed me to be able to change people's lives. And I encourage you, if you're ready to maximize that, I encourage you, if you're ready to live from your greatness, if you're ready to take a chance on you, well, what if I don't make it? So what? Nat Turner, he never lived. But he struck a blow that ultimately broke the back of slavery. Live with a sense of urgency. Be willing to change your approach. It's a time you got to live this same life like you mean business. The days are just, just flying by. I believe that life is for living, for loving, and living a meaningful life, purposeful life. Why, why purposeful? Well, because it narrows your choices. I can't make the choices for you. All I can share with you to minimize the pain and, and just living a life that's not you. So that your future you, your future life will say, I'm glad you made that choice. Make choices and ask yourself to question 
is this going to bring the best out of me? Or is this going to take me down a path at some point in time I will regret that I made this choice? The road to life is straight and narrow and few there be that find it because few there be that are willing to be disciplined. Few there be that are coachable. There's nothing worse than arrogance and ignorance. People who think they know and they don't know. It's a new year. I'm going to get it done in 21. What is it that you're determined to do? Yeah, there are a lot of people walking around with a lot of potential in them that's dead. Genius in them that's dead. The distance that I have traveled so far is longer than the distance I have left. Is that the same for you? We don't know how much time we have left. Have you had some setbacks and failures and, and you have convinced yourself it can't be done? Change your approach, but don't change your decision. You can live a life that will outlive you. Oh, you have greatness in you. It's not judged by how much money you have. It's not judged by that. No. What's money without courage? What's money without determination? Not much. It's worthless. A little money and a whole lot of ingenuity, and you can turn all kinds of nothing into something. I've never seen an ambulance or hearse at a funeral carrying some money behind you or furniture or home. They don't bury you with homes, with your brand new car, your Rolex. When Howard Hughes, who was the richest man in the world, died, Somebody asked on the plane, how much did he leave? And the answer was, all of it. Live your life in such a way that life don't owe you any change.